One of the most frustrating things for me as a technical artist working in the game industry is sometimes I get a lot of FBX files and I need to connect the materials. And Unity doesn't have an easy way to batch connect material references. And I'll show you what I mean by this. If I select all of these files together, I can't just drag and drop the shared material onto all the files at the same time. Before LLMs, I couldn't justify the dev time, in my case, on automating the process. I know some programming, but I'm not amazing at it. I want to test out multiple different LLMs to see which one is able to deliver the tool that I need and in how many attempts. The three models that I'm going to look at are Claude, ChatGBT, and Grok. So to start out, I'm going to start with ChatGBT. From my understanding, O3 Mini High, this is the one to use for coding and logic. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to turn the search on and let's go ahead and make our prompt. This is the prompt that I've written. So one thing that I want to emphasize as I've done a little bit of testing with this, there is a very key prompt that if you do not add to your prompt, no LLM will be able to create a robust material batching tool. And this took me a little while to understand. I'm going to require the tool to first clear out the material slot and set it to none before trying to assign a new target material. Because sometimes an FBX file could have a material already existing into the remapped material section. Sometimes it might be missing a material. And we want to make sure that whether or not a material already exists, the tool always works. And in order to do that, I've added a part. And let's go ahead and just read this. I want you to build me this tool by programming it for me. Because sometimes if you don't specify, ChatGPT just refuses to code. Or at least I have to really ask it, please, can you code? Or just go ahead and code something for me. But yeah, so I'm asking it, please program this for me. I am using Unity 6. Make sure this script is compatible with Unity 6. I have a specific name I want this script to be called, and this script will be called Material Replacement Tool. And then here's the part where I say what I want the script to do. I want it to add my selected FBX files from the project window and add them into a list. Allow me to set my target materials. The key here, notice how I said target materials. Sometimes an FBX file can have multiple materials, and I want to have support for it to allow me to assign multiple materials to a selection of FBX files if I need it. So that's that. When I click apply, the tool will first set all material references to none, clear out the existing material refs, references, apply, and just to emphasize, without this portion, without the part where I set all the references to none, I find that no current existing LLM is able to create a tool that works in all cases. And at least that's what I've seen so far. If you find a prompt that actually does end up working, please let me know. And to continue on this prompt, apply my target material into the empty material reference slot. Reminder, only add features that I have requested. Sometimes these LLMs could go rogue and just add a bunch of features that I did not request. I once had Claude add so much code I didn't ask for that I hit the uh, daily limit. And it was just so frustrating because I was like, okay, I'm almost done. And it just adds a bunch of features I didn't ask for. And I get locked out for six hours. Uh, super frustrating. It's not a good experience. And then the FBX files must always be set to use embedded materials. And this is just another thing to just reduce confusion for these LLMs. For this to work, I need them to use the embedded materials. Okay, so that's that. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Just for simplicity, I'm going to create my script in this same directory that I'm going to be working in for this test tutorial. Okay, so we've copy pasted the code in here. Let me save it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the errors and I'm going to press Control C to copy them and then go back into ChatGBT and paste them. Because Unity has multiple different versions, you'll run into compatibility issues often. That's why I said Unity 6 when I was prompting it initially but that looks like that did not resolve the compatibility issues. So in this case, it did not get it correct in the first attempt. Let's see if the second iteration works. Let's go to tools, 
material replacement tool. I know which material all of these use. It's called grade based on their embedded information right here. So I'm going to go into the graveyard folder where the materials are. It's pink, and that just means that it was made on an older version of Unity. So I'm going to go to Edit, Rendering, Materials, Convert to an updated URP version. Proceed. OK. And since I know this is the only material I'm going to be working on for this tutorial, I'm going to move it into the directory I'm working in right now. I think it's the model one. Boom. So we have our materials in FBX files. I don't, I'm not going to be working with this. And I'm not going to be working with this. So everything is in one place. I'm going to bring back my tool again. OK, let's see. Sometimes these scripts can cause issues by mapping my FBX files in the wrong way. And it could be a pain to revert that. So since I'm using version control, I'm going to save this. I'm going to create a new branch, new branch. I'm going to call this um, batch material um, assigner tutorial 01. Go ahead and bring my changes over. Saving test files. All right, now I can start experimenting with this tool. And if my FBX files get ruined, because there's so many of them, just going by one one and trying to adjust it is a uh, pain. So, all right, let's go ahead and add selected FBX files. All right, let's go to add our material. And we'll know if it's working if our scene properly updates. So let's go ahead and apply. Okay, it did not work. Let's see what happened. All right, so nothing happened. So how many attempts is that? Let me just double check the attempts. So that was attempt two. Let's see if attempt three gets me anything. I don't know. Part of the challenge in this is without me necessarily having to debug it myself. So any warnings, I just skip them uh, until I, I see them again. Then I'll let ChatGPT figure that one out. All right, let's see if this works now. Okay, so look at that. One of them worked. I wonder what's going on here. Because it applied it on the FBX file, but it's not showing in the inspector. So this thing looks like it. I don't know how that works. So it got connected. Copy paste this. All right. So third attempt. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to say it doesn't work, but slightly improved. You know, I'm thinking if the pseudocode is so detailed that it's basically programming, then I don't think it really counts. The idea here is I want the LLM to fill in the lack of detail. If it looks like a regular user who doesn't know how to code, can it create these kinds of tools? That's why I'm avoiding trying to do too much detailed guidance. I'm going to copy this. And I think I'm going to set the cap for the attempts to five. Let me just close this out, bring it out, add the FBX files, add material, apply. Whoa. So it did something that I did not ask for. It created a bunch of prefabs. That is not what I wanted. Did not stay on topic. That's the fourth attempt. It created prefabs, not modified FBX files. I'm going to go back to this is why I have this thing right here. I'm going to discard all those changes. Discard. OK. All right. So last attempt, I specifically wanted you to modify FBX files. Do not create new files or prefabs for me. This is definitely not true. I know this is possible. So it's telling me, unfortunately, it's not supported, but that's not right. So let's go ahead and see what this last one looks like before I move on. All right, so that's a fail. Now, if any of you know if there is a, a better model, because I'm more familiar with uh, Claude, ChatGPT has a bunch of different models. The naming is a little bit confusing for me. If you know of a better model for this that's more powerful um, for coding, let me know. But I'm going to say failed um, fifth attempt. I don't really know a bunch of stuff going in here. So five. Five attempts, I think, just to save some time. All right. So that's that. And then let's go ahead and try Grok. Grok, let's go. Enabled smartest. OK, code. So I'm going to give it the same exact prompt as before. I'm going to turn on think and let's go. And you can tell I'm not signed in for Grok. OK, let's go ahead and paste that in here. Oh, wow. OK, no errors. That's always nice. Usually I get some errors just to make sure. OK, yeah, only one file modified. That's good. I'm going to remove this because I don't know why ChatGPT's code modified that without actually updating the FBX file in a way that I understand. OK, so all these are missing their material. Oh, this is interesting. Instead of creating a tool section, it went into Windows. And this is where it's at. 
Okay, number of materials, nice. Add FBX files. Let me go ahead and add them. It only added one. Let me drag and drop it. See if that works. Okay, apply material. Really nice. Oh, wait a minute. It worked. Oh, wow. That's actually quite shocking for me. I was not expecting it to work. Um, but it's doing something weird. So it's showing it here in the preview, but it's not attaching it to the reference. And I assume that is really weird. Because of the way it connected it, it didn't update the FBX files that I've already placed in the scene. Because ideally, if you actually assign a material reference here, it would also update all of the FBX files that I have in the scene. But because the way it did it, it didn't embed into the FBX file, but somehow it was still able to assign it. Oh, I see what it's doing. Wait a minute. Actually, I don't, oh, that's interesting. Okay, let me, let me revert one of these files because I think I get what it did. It didn't actually do what I wanted it to do. It has a material embedded into it when it was exported from a um, 3D modeling program. But that's not quite what I wanted. Let me just double check that's what happened. Let me revert grave one. I'm going to revert that and just so I can compare. It doesn't, it hasn't marked these. They're not marked as, oh, look at that. I re-imported and it's okay. So I just shift clicked. This is why it gets a little buggy because not buggy, but it's very unclear to me what's getting updated and what's not. But when I re-imported these FBX files, it wiped out the preview. I'm a little bit confused what happened there. I'm going to undo, discard these changes. I'm going to save my scene, close out Unity and restart it and just pretend I'm starting from scratch because I'm a little bit unsure of what went down there. And I want to make sure I give it a good go because it for a second there, it looked like it got it in the first try, but it looks a little finicky. Terrible's missing. Let me just type in default. Why is that not connecting? Let's just go with that. I don't need it to be perfect right now. Let's find the mesh. Okay. So this is our baseline. This is what I expect. They're set to legacy, which I'm not a fan of, but let's go ahead and try the code one more time. Go back here, window. I'm not seeing the code. What's going on here? Let me just double check. Let's, I feel like I'm not seeing the code show up right now. Let me go ahead and read this real quick. I think, okay, that's confusing. Why does it show me two separate code? Material, okay, let me done. I think this is the code. I copied and pasted the wrong section. Okay. And if it gives me a setup that's too complicated for me to, I'm going to judge it based on how simple it is to use. I don't want multiple scripts and like a super intricate setup. Okay. I did not want, they keep doing this. I don't understand why a lot of these LLMs, they keep creating prefabs from these FBX files. ChatGBT did this and now uh, Grok is doing it. Let me go ahead and follow up with Grok. I don't want prefabs. Please focus on my original ask of modifying, modifying existing FBX files. Please ensure that it's all done using one script. Okay, again, this is why I am using version control so I can quickly just discard those changes and um, keep testing it out. Okay, I guess now I need to keep track of how many attempts it's been. I'm sure that a prompt exists to get Grok to do exactly what I want, but the idea here isn't finding the perfect prompt. It's, can it take bad prompting by me and get me tools that I need? Okay, when I do that, it goes all the way down to the bottom. Okay, this is attempt one, this is attempt two, and this is attempt three. And then this is the fourth attempt. I think this is the last one actually. Um, might be wrong. I'll do one more just in case, but I highly doubt I'll be able to turn it around. Okay, let's go ahead and come here. One thing that's a little bit confusing when using Grok, it's not like I don't want to read three pages to know which code snippet I need to copy paste. I just want it to just give me exactly what I need. Because sometimes the writing, there's just so much, there's almost too much information. And I don't want to spend five minutes reading just to know where things go. I find the overall formatting a little bit more cluttered um, for coding on Grok. 
where am I looking at? Okay, here I'm comparing it to ChatGBT and Claude. It's still doing a great job at formatting it. It's just not as nice as ChatGBT or Claude. All right, same files, same thing. Let's apply it. It keeps doing this. I don't know how it's able to do this. It's not it's not setting the material reference. Okay. Okay. So it looks like Grox got it. I just don't like, well, I don't know. Let me see if it gets wiped out when I re-import it. Re-import. Just to double check that it's actually doing what I wanted it to do. Let me assign it a different material because I have a feeling it might be using um, the embedded inside the FBX file and not actually using the target material. Let's see. Because sometimes FBX files have an embedded material already, and I can't tell if Grok is just activating that portion and not actually assigning my target material. But to just make sure that it's not using the embedded of the FBX file, I'm going to put a material that I know is not embedded. This material over here, I know this material is not embedded in the FBX file itself. So I'm going to apply this and see. Yeah. Yeah, it's not applying the material. Um, I'm going to call this a fail mainly because the tool was never assigning my target material into my selection. It was simply using the embedded material information in the FBX file. And when it did that, it was able to find an embedded material in the FBX file that made it look like it was working. And this was just pure coincidence. It it's basically how the FBX file was set up. That made me a little bit confused at first. Slightly better experience than ChatGBT, um, at least the models that I've been using. Okay, so that's, I'm going to call that the fifth. And now we're going to move up to the big one. Let's see, I'm pretty confident Claude's gonna get this. I'm going to discard this change, close this out, okay. All right, so our scene has been cleaned out. We'll open up Claude. I'm gonna be using the extended, it's gonna be Claude 3.7 Sonnet with extended turned on, and let's get going. All right, same prompt as before. I hope this works. I can't tell if these models are predictable, like, can they get the right answer sometimes and then other times not so much? I haven't used them enough to know if that's the case. I'm curious. Like, if you use the same prompt multiple different times in different days, um, can the output be different? I assume so. So it's thinking for a really long time. The biggest downside of using Claude, at least from my experience, isn't so much the quality of the code, is that you can hit your cap very quickly. So even though the quality is quite high, I'm using the uh, $20 a month here. I think that's the main downside. There's a bit of an anxiety when I'm using it because if it goes, if Claude goes rogue and starts rant, like typing out stuff I don't want, I can literally run out of tokens. And if I'm actually trying to solve something that I'm relying on this tool to do for me, um, it's quite frustrating to, to get blocked out. If this just works, it'll be quite shocking for me because. I've tested a bunch of different tools out before that I've tried to create with Claude. And usually it requires a little bit of back and forth to get it working right. So let's go ahead and select our FBX files, add them and add our material. And wow, it worked. First attempt, I'm actually quite shocked. Prior to this, I tried to make this tool and using the same exact prompt, the last time I did it was just like, yesterday, it took me four prompts and starting with this exact same prompt I used here. So this works. It updated, it's connected, everything's working. All right, so that makes it a lot simpler. Um, Clot work, first try. Yeah. So what does that tell me? Um, uh, Claude's awesome. 